A very good morning to all of you. My colleagues from the financial sector who are here, the senior uh, executive team from the Outlook group, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here engaging on an issue that is more relevant than ever. Today, the air is thick with speculation on role and relevance of public sector banks, which remain crossed in tangles of politico-economic cycle. It's an opportunity for me, rather, to exchange thoughts on how best to navigate these uncertain times. I therefore convey my gratitude to Outlook Money team for handing me this opportunity today. I would like to start with an overview of the banking sector's recent progress. Some numbers. Let me give you a brief overview of our sector. Banks dominate the Indian financial system with 63% market share in financial assets of system, rest being accounted by insurance companies, which account for 19%, NBFCs, which account for 8%, mutual funds which account for 6%, and provident and pension funds for the rest. Commercial banks account for 92% of the total banking sector's assets, and other cohabitant of banking sector include cooperative banks, regional rural banks, and local area banks. Within the commercial banks, the public sector banks continue to dominate with over 70% of market share of assets. While the PSBs continue to hold more than two-thirds share of banking assets, they are gradually ceding the market share to their private sector peers. I think that is the theme which I am li like trying to throw some light today. In fact, they had only one-third of the share in credit dispersed last year. That means from the, in the incremental asset creation, the PSBs had one-third of the share. The theme of my talk today is to assess whether PSBs can hold on to their market share given the enormity of problems they face at present. The question is increasingly relevant with the entry of new competitors like payment banks, small finance banks, and more unconventional ones in the form of fintechs. At the outset, I would like to make a distinction. When you talk of market share, it usually refers to share in business. However, we should also be attentive to other important aspects like profitability and market capitalization. Public sector banks have more than two-thirds share of assets, but makes less than half of market share in terms of profitability, even at the operating level. Even lesser is their market share in terms of market capitalization. I think when we talk of defending the market share, I think the, the next two aspects of profitability and uh, market capitalization are very important. I think defending that is more important than at the top line. To my mind, therefore, the question we should be asking ourselves is whether it is important to defend market share on the top line side or concentrate on profitability. What will contribute more to profitability, whether it is loan growth or rebalancing of portfolios? whether retail will continue to be profitable. Could there be more value accretive segments like MSMEs? So these are the questions which I would like to delve to some extent today and uh, thought, uh, like start a thought process on this, particularly in the public sector space. To get a holistic answer, let me quickly get through, you, through the long story of Indian banking, which will help us to set the role and opportunities for PSBs in proper perspective. Indian banking, India has witnessed an exciting phase of high growth during last couple of decades. We are third largest economy by purchasing power parity and seventh largest in nominal exchange rates. We are also forecast to become fifth largest economy this year. Indian banks, particularly the PSBs, have played an important role in this journey. The total asset side of size of Indian banking industry has grown about 12 times since the turn of 21st century from rupees 12 lakh crores as at the end of March 2000 to 141 lakh crores as at the end of March 2017. 
registering a CAGR growth of 16% compared to average nominal GDP growth of 12% during the same period. Consequently, business of banks, that is deposits plus advances as ratio to GDP, has almost doubled from 68% to 126% as of March 17. Balance sheet growth, however, has not been always reflecting into profitability with the improvement in efficiency and productivity. The record here is checkered. The return on assets of banks was 0.5 in 2001, 2000, 2001 and increased to 1% by 2012-13 and then set up a downward journey to 0.35 and maybe even lower in the March 17 and uh, like in the coming years. Profitability, more than anything else, is a function of interest margins and credit cost, which is a measure of asset quality. Gross non GNPAs, the gross non-performing assets to gross advances, declined to 3.6% by March 2012 from 11.4% in March 2000. We passed one cycle in that phase. Only to deteriorate again to 9.3% in March 17. Stress is largely concentrated in corporate book or public sector banks. The capital strength as measured by capital adequacy ratio, however, has improved from 11.4% in 2000, 2001 to 13.6% in 2016-17 becoming qualitatively better under Basel III, thereby building resilience to downside risks. Public sector banks played a very important role in nurturing growth and recovery in the aftermath of global financial crisis of 2008. Credit expansion by the PSBs was much higher in the period following the onset of crisis, while the credit expansion by foreign and private sector banks was significantly lower. The PSB's loan book grew three times to 52 lakh crore between six-year period uh, from 2008 to 2014, noting a CAGR of 19%. Significant share of incremental lending went into financing infrastructure. The share of infrastructure in loan book grew to 15% from 9% as of end of March 2008. The PSBs are, to an extent, paying the price for their do-good nature in shaping the post-crisis boom. Some of the investments, as it turned out, were not so well thought of. It wilted with the turn of economic cycle, with interest rates rising in response to inflation pressures. Meanwhile, internal factors like policy stasis in government began taking a toll on large infrastructure projects, delaying their completion and thus disrupting debt servicing ability of promoters. PSBs were left with sore assets. There's a social angle which plays out with public sector banks. Public sector banks have been a messenger of hope for larger masses. Democratizing finance and empowering poor and underprivileged to shape their destiny. Now there is at least, at least one member in every Indian household who is having a bank account. Besides, there is another aspect of inclusiveness in financing of millions of micro and small enterprises. PSBs have been hand-holding budding entrepreneurs by holistically furthering government schemes like Mudra, Stand Up India and Start Up India. There is no denying that these are hard times for Indian banking and public sector banks in particular. A sixth of our loan portfolio remain under stress. The burden of provisioning and haircuts is taking a toll on our bottom line. More PSBs are falling under prompt corrective action framework by every passing quarter. As if these challenges are not good enough, there has come another dimension in terms of vulnerability to frauds. Markets accordingly have hammered their stocks, prices half of the book value, while private sector lenders trade at price to book ratio of 2x. However, some of this performance decline is indeed cyclical and will reverse in line with the recovery of economy. The PSB should retain their public sector nature, supporting the weak and enabling enterprises at the bottom of pyramid. However, they should also find ways to do business profitably. Being commercial undertakings, their performance is also judged and how they fare in terms of defending and rather raising their market share in profitability as well as creating value for stakeholders. Defending the market share. The economic transformation of India, supported by demographies, 
demographics, urbanization and industrialization will provide holistic opportunities for the banking sector, be it in retail, corporate or rural banking. We are a fast-growing economy. There will be space for everyone to do business and prosper. Newcomers can grow without making it a zero-sum game for incumbents. Business opportunities notwithstanding, there will be considerable heterogeneity in terms of relative contribution to bottom line. A focused pursuit of business will differentiate winners from laggards. Let me explain. When we do a profitability analysis, assuming a normalized business scenario, we find that MSMEs emerge most profitable segment with thickest interest margins, making highest return on assets of about 3.1%, and highest return on capital employed close to 49%. The MSME segment is followed by retail with a ROA of 1.5% and return on equity of almost 31%. The large corporate with ROI of 1.5% and return on equity, 25%, 25% follow that. So retail and MSMEs are capital light business, making it attractive proportion for PSBs. There is, of course, a risk dimension added to MSMEs, which call for PSBs investing in origination and underwriting capabilities, as also specialization in terms of better collection mechanisms. The finding of micro-analysis echoed by the macro-analysis is done by McKinsey. In its recent report on Indian banking, with new entrants like payment banks and small finance banks enhancing competition for low-cost CASA resources, loans will increasingly become bigger driver for banks' profitability. McKinsey estimates that loan share in revenue pool of banking sector could rise by 11 percentage points to 58% by 2022 as against 47% presently while resources share could come down to 22% from 30% presently. It is estimated that retail and SMEs together will be largest contributor in revenue pool of Indian banks by year 2022. Within corporate, mid-sized corporate will bring significant revenue opportunities for banks which have better bargaining power and more cross-sell opportunities. Public sector banks have to seize this dynamic while outlining priorities for next three to five years perspective. Public sector banks have broadened the scope of delivery channels to ATMs, internet banking, mobile banking, and call center, apart from traditional interfaces like branches. They have rolled out technology to the advantage of customers. Next phase is about enhancing digitization and leveraging data for business efficiencies. The PSBs need scaling up portfolio of digital offerings and workflow management, both credit and operational aspects. They should also look at co-opting fintechs in making a holistic offering for customers. It should also help them withstand the competitive pressure from growing tribe of unconventional players. With the demontation and goods and service tax, the process of formalization has expedited. We are becoming a data-rich society. It's time we build on to these gains. The PSBs have massive customer base. This wealth of information on customers could be harnessed through data analytics. For example, our banks may shift from conventional balance sheet cash flow analysis based lending framework to transaction based loan appraisal. Likewise, by leveraging technology, we could bring down cost of credit, making more enterprises economically viable. We could be more responsive in grievance redressal, building mutually beneficial relations with customers. Now I would like to touch on my bank, uh, the issues which I mentioned, we are trying to take care. How we are taking care in our bank, I would like to briefly mention the Union Bank's journey. At Union Bank, we have the satisfaction of navigating a challenging business milieu while building strengths in our chosen areas. Union Bank has distinction of rising five notches in ranking of nationalized banks by assets. We are now fifth largest nationalized bank as against 10th tenth, uh, tenth ranked a couple of decades ago. The bank achieved another landmark last quarter by crossing rupees 7 lakh crore of business mix with impressive loan growth of 13.5%. More satisfactorily, our risk-weighted assets grew only through 3%. It reflects that we are also growing qualitatively better. That is the strength of our business. We aspire to break into top three in domestic business by year 2020. However, our primary go goal to grow profitably by enhancing efficiency of current business as well as extending presence in new revenue lines. Accordingly, the bank made decisive shift in strengthening the balance sheet. 
we have increased the provisioning cover significantly while being compliant of capital adequacy norms. On the HR side also, we have taken certain initiatives. Taking our horizon a little further, we are building our people's capability in terms of knowledge, skills, and technological support to serve customers with responsibility. There are interventions in making our processes efficient and people accountable. Take, for example, credit underwriting. The chances of default are low. It, uh, like, uh, sorry. If you have a credit underwriting, if you know everything about the customer, if it is done diligently, the chances of default are very low. However, in our system, processing used to be dispersed across branches, and proposals escalate through layers like regions, zones, and corporate offices. It's a time-consuming exercise, and with quality subject to capabilities across different layers. Branches, in particular, have little time to attend to details with diligence. Our most day time is consumed in managing routine transactions. As a result, new business as well as asset quality often gets compromised. This needed to be changed through centralization to ensure speed of service and quality through specialization. Recently, the bank has opened the centralized hubs called Sarals for MSME, mid-corporate branches for the handling mid-corporate business, and Union Samradhi Kendras, particularly for rural and semi-urban centers, for shifting the processing part of loans from branches to trained and specialized centers, which are called the hubs. This works in both ways, by making branches free for monitoring and, mo monitoring and mobilizing new business, and also improve quality of processing and enhanced due diligence. Likewise, resources. In a rising interest rate environment, for a competitive advantage, acquiring CASA becomes even more critical. CASA is a function of servicing, th servicing through branches. Better the service experience, more likely that a customer maintains relationship with the bank. The bank is investing in mentoring youngsters with the right kind of soft skills and customer service attitude. As an organization, we are committed to providing holistic environment for growth and well-being of our employees. Union Bank has accordingly reimagined its approach to institutional learning. The learning management system called Moodle, which stands for Modular Object-Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment, leverages digital infrastructure to provide customized and progressive learning solution for all employees. It is designed to help create an online classroom setting with opportunities for rich interaction and collaboration with the learners. Over 100 plus e-learning modules have been developed by internal training resources as well as industry experts across various domains of banking. Employees have to pursue the relevant modules to keep abreast of developments in their field as also equip themselves for future roles. The learning progress is being mapped to their annual performance appraisal. This would complement the conventional campus-based learning to make more informed and skilled workforce. Union Bank has been vibrant with initiatives in digital banking. Digital channels account for 73% of transactions, which is one of the highest in Indian banking. Our ATM to branch ratio of 1.8 compares favorably with the peers, including the private sector banks. Every month, the bank is coming with new products with unique features. Our focus is to speedily scale up usage of digital channels like U-Mobile, internet banking, POS, and ATMs. And these are big cost savers for the bank and add convenience to customers, resulting in higher satisfaction level. Internally, we are leveraging digital through business analytics, performance monitoring, and stress management. To conclude, India continues to be a robust long-term growth story characterized by favorable demography, democratic polity, fast-changing urban landscape, digital deepening, and a rule-bound institutional setting. Public sector banks, being the dominant stakeholders of Indian banking, have both role and responsibility to finance India's growth story. Government realizes the value of PSBs in India's macro perspective. It has recently unveiled recapitalization plan of 2.11 trillion. It has rightly used the recap opportunity to force structural shifts in the op operating culture of PSBs through E's agenda, which stands for enhanced access and service excellence. The E's focus on six themes of customer responsiveness, responsible banking, credit offtake, PSBs as Udyami Mitra, deepening financial inclusion, and digitalization and development, developing personnel for brand PSB. I'm happy to share with you 
uh, that Union Bank has been already working along most of these areas outlined for ease framework. We have to scale up these initiatives fast. Friends, these are exciting times for Indian banking. The current challenges notwithstanding, public sector banks have been a force for good, enabling growth of economy while democratizing banking for masses. They have been through tougher times and have emerged stronger. They will bounce back this time too. Thank you.